Hey, everybody. Recently, we, we had a chance to get on the road and meet some of you all across the country. Jake and I took a whole week, and we spent it driving around the country, a little bit of business, a little bit of pleasure, but we reached out to you and said, hey, who wants to meet up, show off their projects? And we had an overwhelming response. So thank you very much. And this video are those travels and those interviews with those of you who reached out to us, and we truly appreciate it. Uh, one of our destinations was Tucson, Arizona. And in Tucson, Arizona, and throughout the West, is this amazing metal supermarket. Have you guys seen this? Take a look at, at this here. This is the Metal Depot. There's Blake, who we were visiting. He's our new tooling engineer. He's been working with us for a while. And then uh, you can't believe this place. It's got all kinds of metal tube. It's got just a, a bunch of different fittings, scrap metal remnants. I'll show you that in a second. But if you've got a metal supermarket uh, near you, you definitely want to check this out. They had square tubing, round tubing, aluminum, steel. I mean, for us that, that make things out of metal conduit and metal pipe, uh, it was just truly awesome to see out. And you can get uh, put on some gloves, touch, and look. They had some uh, different fittings and all kinds of new things that I've never even seen before. Aluminum sheet, all kinds of different stuff. I mean, we get asked all the time, okay, what fits with our connectors? Obviously, we made them for EMT conduit. They're designed to go with that. But there's a lot of other metal tubes, aluminum tubes that could fit with it. And we found a bunch in here. And I just love the fact that you can get in there, you can measure, you can touch it, you can, uh, you know, check it out, reach into the bins. They had a whole lot of casters that you could just, and then a lot of fabricator stuff too. Big blocks of steel that, you know, if you're machining targets, some AR500 targets uh, that I thought was neat, a lot of plate. And these were neat. These were uh, railing fittings uh, that if you were going to weld together a railing, this might be something that you'd use. This is my new favorite place. <laughs> Heck yeah. Blake loved oh, it. And caps. He said it was his new favorite place. Domed and caps. And then wheels. just all kinds of pressed things. Rollers. This is neat. Oh, wow. Had some rollers, yeah. V-groove yeah. rollers. Oh, bearings and everything? That Amazing. were pressed with bearings. Gash gate latches. Rollers. That looked really, <laughs> that steel ball looked really heavy, but it was actually super light. It was just two halves formed together and welded. They had some flanges, all kinds of different finishing as well. I thought these were neat. They were like spray-on etching. And then we learned that there was a second-hand section of remnants. You know, these were cut pieces, left over, and it was so cheap. Uh, we were there shopping for Blake to have a, a workbench, a steel top for a workbench. And we got something that was a good workbench size, thick steel, for only 30 bucks, 40 bucks. It was great. We should have had gloves on for sure. They say, put gloves on, you're going to cut yourself. Now, we didn't cut ourselves, but you definitely want gloves, and they have them there in the store. Cents a piece, this stuff is a steel. 21 cents a pound. Steel, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, now I understand. That was a joke that Jake was making. I can be a little dense sometime. So that was Industrial Metal Supply. Really cool place if you're in Arizona or Southern California. Definitely check them out. And if you're in another part of the country, look out for something like it. I've never been to something like that where you can get really hands-on with the metal and walk around. But take a look. It might be out there. And after we got the metal top for the table, we took it back to Blake's place. We That was the whole reason we made this journey was to set him up. And this is his shop that we're, uh, we got the mill into. Now he's got Maker Pipe West out there. 
uh, where he's going to be doing a lot of new product development and dyes. And we brought that mill, uh, which is the same mill that we've milled all the dyes on. Um, that is a Novacon Taurus Pro that we got right when we did the Kickstarter. And now it's out <laughs> in Blake's. And take a look at that. That was just, I mean, that we couldn't have got any closer to get it in the garage where Blake is going to have his shop set up. It actually worked out great. We brought the pallet jack. The shop had to, back in South Carolina, had to do without it for a little bit. And then uh, we got it all wired up and then got it brought back in, tried it out, make sure it worked, did a couple test machining things and uh, got it all in place, ran some tests, and he's ready to make some new dies. So you can see we're really DIY. I mean, that's how we've been doing new products and setting up Maker Pipe all from the beginning. We're community driven. So that's just a little taste of how, how we do things at Maker Pipe. Uh, and then Blake needed a, a stand for the computer. Uh, the computer is, or I'm sorry, the CNC mill is run off of a computer. It uses Mach 3 and uh, we had to make a stand. So we were inside doing a little bit of bending. Uh, Becky's wife was helping out and, uh, yeah, we got we got it built. I think it was the first time Becky was building with Maker Pipe. Uh, she did fantastic. She jumped right in. Thanks for the hospitality, Becky. And there it is. We have our working bench. This is sturdy. As you this was the table that we built uh, while we were there. That was the steel that we got from the Metal Depot, and it worked out great. We were able to bolt a vise to it great metal table for metal working and we even did a countersink uh, with threaded nut inserts on the top and you can see that in the corner those are countersunk uh, bolts that went down and we did that way of securing the table which worked out really good and added a lot of rigidity but yeah that's Blake right setup now, big cross members underneath big sheet of steel from the industrial metal supply yeah and that was 30 bucks that top fantastic work done we got blake all set up and then we set out to meet some of the makers that reached out to us first stop was simon great guy uh love seeing simon's builds and he actually has worked at a historical pre preservation society uh, in arizona uh, so we heard a lot about his history and then he loves doing scale designs he's definitely a maker and diy enthusiast so we went to visit him first off here's a couple uh, photos Simon had of his models, unbelievable historical models, scale models. Uh, that was really cool to see. And we got a chance to learn about his passions, which is a lot of fun. Next are some build photos that give you a brief background of kind of what his build was. And then we've got some video clips after that. It was great meeting Simon. Uh, what he had in his backyard was this privacy fence that he was creating. And he extended the stone wall up with electrical conduit and maker pipe fittings. Uh, you can see, actually, we even had, uh, it was super nice to Simon and, and the workers there. Tree guys actually held off while we uh, went in the backyard. Uh, so that was really nice of them. But check out, he's got um, vines that are growing all the way around that are gonna climb up that chicken wire. And it's just starting out, but it looks good with the EMT conduit painted. Um, Really neat way to get some more privacy in his backyard where his pool is. Thought it was a definitely a cool build there. And then Simon walks us through some of the details about his build right here. And I ran a string line from over here all the way over there and then back the other way. So yeah. everything is dead level. You just used a little line level you, you dead level. flip on the string. I love it. And then um, dug down and just put this like scrap concrete in here. Mm -hmm tamped it down and then put the pipe on it and where it came up to the string line I marked it and uh, I had a metal cutting blade in my cutoff saw so I just cut it. I, I didn't use the tube cutter yep. which I, I know you recommend um, and it was more of a pain to install the blade than it probably would have been to use a tube cutter mm -hmm. but it worked well. Well and um, you had a fairly big project so. <laughs> uh, it, it was big but it was simple and it went smoothly 
I mean, I love the tube cutter. Don't get me wrong. And, and I recommend it a lot because it's such an entry way to do it and an easy way, right? You don't even need power or anything. But in Simon's case, I mean, he's got a lot of verticals to cut, a lot of conduit to cut. So it totally, uh, when you can, I mean, those tools really help. Um, and then, of course, I've used the, the standard connectors here, the EMT joiners. Oh, right. Um, and so everything sits on here, and then I've clamped it to the wall in two spots, and the chicken wire is just wired to it. And as the vines grow, they should cover this. And they're already doing pretty well, but this has been yeah. established for just over a year. Uh -huh. And it's a little slow, but that mm -hmm. may have something to do with the soil conditions. Mm -hmm. And, and he, Simon used one hole straps to drill into the brick, anchored it in the brick, and then, um, yeah, attached the conduit. This was a future project that Simon had planned. He has a classic home which has just single pane windows, so he needs some relief from the heat and the sun. And he's going to do some window shades, which I thought was a fantastic use of maker pipe. And that'll give him some insulation. Um, I'm probably going to put... EMT down through here in these three spots okay. and then put grout in there uh -huh. um, and then once it's rigid I'll put a connect between them to give this triangular structural integrity. Oh sure. This was another future project. Once he got Simon going he had a bunch of different projects that he wanted to show us and this was on the other side of the pool and it was gonna he was going to extend that privacy fence to you know this little section as well so uh, you heard his idea about that simon was finding projects all over the place this was another one where he wanted to cover his pool pump with a little bit enclosure explains that here uh, epoxy that solid oh neat once it's set then i'll use one of the emt connectors and then continue on out yeah and then that, there's another one over there so I'll tie it and then tie it to there. So it's in between a line. Right. It won't move this way much. And then I'll just have to do the same that I did here over here. Thanks, Simon, for letting us stop by. It was a great time meeting you and seeing all your projects. I hope you get done half of the projects that you're planning on. And it was great hearing about your modeling hobby and all the feedback you had for us. Uh, we hope to hear from you soon. We're back on the road. We went up to Phoenix to meet with Danny. Danny has a holiday light show business where he has a couple shows in the Phoenix area uh, that he produces on a yearly basis. And then he gave us a behind the scenes look of how he goes about preparing the light fixtures for that show. And that's where Maker Pipe comes in. You're going to want to check out his website, ArizonaChristmasLights.com. And it's really impressive what he's got going on. All right, here's Danny's website, Arizona Christmas Lights. He's got a whole portfolio of all of the installations he's done with Christmas lights. And then lights on the farm. That's what we're going to check out. All right, here's lights on the farm. One of the shows that Danny and his company produces throughout the year. And if you've ever been to one of these things, it's amazing. Arizona's largest where they have a synchronized walkthrough. Just look how massive that is, all the lights. And he'll explain a little bit about his process. But I wanted you to see that, how really a cool production they do. I really like the, the walk through. Let's see. Um, I really liked the, I really like this tunnel. Yeah. This tunnel was super cool. Uh, made out of conduit has a programmable led lights and everything is synchronized to the light show and the walk through really an impressive operation. We went into Danny's shop and it's the off season for him right now. So he was prepping his displays and his structures for the next season. And he's actually gone through a big transformation. You can see these are made out of maker pipe. And he said that the, the whole system using maker pipe saved him so much money because the alternative is welded steel. So you, you might have seen those before. Traditionally, these are done with welded steel frames that take a ton of time to fabricate and then what Danny found was that through maker pipe, not only was it easier to, to make, but it was also easier to store and then take down and manage throughout the year. And he had a really cool system where he took this coroplast material and then made holes for the light. So he's able to digitize his design and then fabricate it really easily with maker pipe and uh, the coroplast. 
and the lights. There's a light fixture that he had. He, he, he just made that whole stand out of maker pipe. Really cool. There were some of the displays where he's able to uh, route that out with Coroplast and then have a spot for each one of the lights. And they're all addressable. So the computer system that runs these knows exactly where each light is and then the display that it's trying to do. And it's great because it saves him a ton of space when he's storing them. He can loosen a couple connectors, collapse everything down a flat packet, and store it in much less space. And I loved hearing that because anytime a customer can save money, especially in a business, that is just music to my ears. I love hearing that. Danny showed us a really cool hack as well. Take a look at this. This is perforated strap uh, that he used with a couple bolts, perforated hanger strap. That he got, and this is how we attach the Coroplast uh, designs to the maker pipe frame. And I bet this is a pretty useful thing. Here it is in action, where he used it to grab onto the maker pipe, the, the conduit right there, a bolt through it, and then another bolt through the Coroplast design, uh, giving him a good mounting point that was kind of flexible and that he could tailor to his exact size. Great hack. And thank you, Danny, for having us in your shop and showing us how you were using Maker Pipe. We loved it, and we hope you stay in touch. And anything we can do to help, just let us know. And if you're in the Phoenix area, don't forget to check out Holiday Light Farm and a couple other of his shows that he has going on. Definitely going to want to check those out. They look spectacular. Uh, then we were off for some fun. We had a quick pit stop at the Grand Canyon, which was something like, okay, big hole in the ground. I get it. <laughs> but... When you're standing there biking on the edge of it, it was truly camping impressive. We did a little camping too. Preparing a four cheese tortellini. It's going to be delicious. Stay tuned as we go through the preparation steps, cooking, and at the end, we'll get to enjoy it too. Oh, so cheesy. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I guess Cameron came out and we decided to do an impromptu cooking show at the, that was on the south rim of the Grand Canyon. We had fun camping there. Uh, but seriously, we had so much fun on the two stops. We had two more, both Jeff and Eric, to come in Texas. And because we have so much footage and they showed us so much on those next two stops, we made two more videos here and here. Uh, Jeff has a wonderful tool organization uh, cart, and there's so many hacks that he dropped on us. That's one to check out. And then Eric has this really cool miter saw table that flips up that he did out of Maker Pipe. So check that out. Appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.